9.2 million. That's how many times React got downloaded just last week alone. As the biggest framework, React has a ton of features. Unfortunately, this comes with a cost. It's very time consuming to learn, it's difficult to integrate with an already existing project, and there's a lot of boilerplate code involved to get started. Thankfully, I have found a better way to build web applications. I use a tool called Alpine.js. Alpine offers you the functionalities of big frameworks like React and Vue at a lot lower cost. You can simply get started by adding utility HTML attributes to add functionality to your website. When using Alpine, you can forget about the boring stuff like transpiler and module bundles and focus more on coding. Join me for the next 15 minutes as you will learn the basics of Alpine by building three simple projects. For the first project, we are going to build a modal pop-up. This simple project will familiarize you with the reactive nature of Alpine and get your feet wet for progressively more difficult projects. Next, we are building a tab layout, one of the most popular layouts, especially on mobile sites. And at last, we are going to build a small web app where you can search for animals filtered by the amount of legs they have. This is going to be the most difficult project and after it you will have a very good understanding of Alpine. Alright, let's start with the modal pop-up. We're going to build this by using a pre-built static website, which is right here. Currently none of the buttons work and the model is showing by default. And we're going to add Alpine to this to make it work. The way I like to install Alpine to my project is by going to their GitHub repository and copying the CDN link and pasting it to the head of my HTML. Now we can start by initializing Alpine. Just like React, Alpine needs a state. And we're gonna add the state to our body tag. And we're gonna use the syntax x data. And the xData is going to be just a normal JavaScript object with a value of is open set to false by default. So how we want this to work is when is open is false, the model is not going to show. But when the is open is true, we want the model to show. So how we can show different elements based on the state. The way we are gonna show or hide different elements using Alpine is by using the attribute x show. Now if we give it the value is open, we can see that the model closes. This is because the is open is currently false. If we manually change is open to true, we can see that the model shows again. Now the next thing we need to do is when I click on the open model button, it should change the is open value to true. So let's now set it to the default value, which is going to be false. And let's add the functionality to the button. So the way we can interact with the different events is by using the command x on, and then after the semicolon, we add the event that we want to listen to. In this case, click. So whenever a person clicks on this button, we want to set is open to true. Now when we click on this, we can see that the model pops up. Next thing we need to do, now when we click on the close, we want to close the model. So again, we can just copy and paste this functionality from here and paste it to the button. And of course, we want to set the is open to false. And let's see if this works. So by default, is open is going to be false. And when we click on this button, it's going to be true. And when we click on the close, is open is going to change back to false. Now we are ready to move on to the second project, which is going to be a tab layout. 
Again, we're gonna do this the same way as we did the mobile pop-up, which is by starting from a completely static site and then adding it the functionality to it. Currently, none of the tabs are working when I click on them. So the way we want this to work is when the features tab is selected, we only want to show this text. And when the installation tab is selected, we want to show this text. And for the tutorial tab, we want to show the last text. For this project, I have already added Alpine to my project. So we can start by initializing our state. Now our text elements, which are over here under this div, and our tabs, which are under this div, they need to share the same state so they can interact with together. Because of this, we need to put the state into their common parent. In this case, their only common parent is the body tag. So this is where we need to add our state. Again, we're gonna use X data. So let's think about our state. In the model pop-up, there's only two possibilities for the state. Either the model is open or closed. For these cases, Boolean is going to be the best option as it has only two possible values. But for a tab layout, we have three possible states. Either the first tab is open, the second or the third. So we have three different options. So the best solution is instead of using a Boolean, we can use a number. So the first layout is going to be index zero, the second one index one, and the tutorial is going to be index two. So for a state, we can use is active, and by default, it should be the tab zero which is the features tab. Now we can use the same method as we used in the modal project to show up different elements based on the state. So for this first text, we want to show it when is active is zero. And for the second one, we want to show it when is active is one. And for the last one, we want to show it when it active is two. I saved it and we can see already only the first one is showing. Now when I manually change the is active to one, we can see that the second text shows up. And when I change the is active to number two, we can see that the third text shows up. Next thing we need to do is when I click on the different tabs, the state changes. And this again is going to work the same way as in the modal layout. So we're gonna use the method x on a click. And for the first one, we wanna set the is active to zero. For the second one, is active to one. And for the third one, is active to two. And let's see how it works. Currently, the functionality is working great, except the styles don't change. Whenever a tab is active, we want the text to be a brighter color and need to have a border at the bottom. And when it's unactive, we want it to have a darker blue color with a hover effect and no border. The way we add dynamic classes in Alpine is going to be a little bit strange, but I will try to explain it the best I can. So we first start off by let's activate the installation first. It doesn't have the active classes yet. So we're going to add dynamic classes by using the attribute semicolon class that is going to be an object. So the key of the object is going to be the classes we want to apply. So whenever the tab is active, we want to add the bottom border and the light blue text. So let's copy it from here and paste it into the class. And the value of this one is going to be a statement that if it's true, 
it's gonna apply the classes. So for the installation tab, we wanna add these classes whenever is active equals one. And let's check if it works. And it works just fine. So let's add this to the other tabs too. Now we instantly notice something. When the features tabs is unactive, it loses the color. And whenever the installation is active, it still has the hover effect and the color does not change. So we need to add two dynamic classes. For the first one, we're gonna add this whenever the tab is active. And for the second one, we wanna add the classes when it's not active. To do this, we can just add a second key value pair. So whenever the tab is not active, we want to add a darker blue text and a hover effect. So let's do it here. And we want to add these classes whenever for the first step, whenever is active is not zero. Let's save it and see if it works. Okay, it works great for the first step. So now we can just copy and paste it for the other tabs too. And remember to change the integer again here. For the second one, we want it to be one. And for the third one, we want it to be two. And now we can delete the default classes that this had. And for the first one too. Let's save it and see if it works. Okay, looks like I accidentally added um, another marker. And now we can see it's working just fine. Now for our last project, we're gonna do the animal search application. So again, this is a completely static site. So whenever we change the minimum legs, nothing changes. Now at the last project, if you notice, we had a lot of copy paste code. All of the tabs had the exact same logic, just with different variables. And if we look at here, how many animals we have, we would have to do a lot of copy pasting to get it to work. Thankfully, there's an easier way to do this in Alpine, which is by using loops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save all the animals into the state and then we're gonna loop over them to show up them on the screen. I'm gonna show you how to do this. But first, we need to find out the common parent element for the input box and for the animal list. The animals are listed in this object and the input is here. So we can use this div as our parent element. So let's start up by again adding the x data here. Now let's first add all of the animals here. So let's give it the key animals, which is going to be an array. And each of the array, each of the items of the array is going to be an object with a name. For the first animal we have duck and then the amount of legs they have, which is going to be a number. So I'm just gonna add this for each of the animals. After the duck, we have kangaroo, we have bear, dog, cow, and at last we have spider. Now we have all the animals saved into the state, so let's see how we can loop over them to render them in the screen. So we can first get rid of all of the other animals here. 
except the duck because we're gonna use this this element to display both the animals. So the way to do loops in Alpine is by first using a tag called template. And in there, we're gonna use the attribute x4, which is gonna signify our for loop. So for each animal in animals, we want to render this element. Let's save it and see what happens. Oops, looks like I misspelled animals here. That's why nothing was showing. So I fix it and now we can see we have six ducks here. Now, of course, we don't wanna show duck for each of them. We wanna show the actual name of the animal. So the way we can dynamically add text to each of the elements is by using the attribute x text which in this case is going to be animal name and now we can see it's working fine let me just fix the text for the kangaroo okay now it's looking great so our next challenge is going to be to filter these animals based on the input box for this we need another state so let's add it to the state again the state is just an JavaScript object, so we can have as many key value pairs as we want. So let's add legs amount and let's set it to zero by default. So the way we are gonna filter the animals based on the legs amount is just by using JavaScript. So for here, we can type animals filter and we want to filter each animal if the animal legs are greater than or equal to legs amount currently it's not filtering anything because all of the animals have either zero or more legs but let's see what happens when we change this to three we can see that all of the two-legged animals got filtered out let's try five for this case we should only see the spider okay it works fine and let's try nine okay it's working just perfectly now the next thing we need to do is whenever we change the input value here we want the legs amount to change and whenever the legs amount changes we want this value to change for this to work we need to use two-way data binding it sounds complicated but it's extremely easy to implement for this one we're gonna use the attribute x model and then after the period, we are going to use the type of the state we want to have. For this one, it's going to be a number. And then we are just going to give the key of the state that we want it to integrate with. So for this case, it's going to be the legs amount. Okay, I saved it now and let's see if it's working. All right, it works. So whenever we change this value here, the legs amount is going to be changed. And whenever the legs amount changes, it changes with an, which animals gets filtered out. I just wanna say a great job on finishing the tutorial. Hopefully you now know the basics of Alpine so you can start integrating it on your own projects. But before you leave, please consider subscribing as I'm going to upload new videos next week.